Good evening, everybody. Danny Gallivan and Dick Irvin back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. The Spectrum is jammed. The atmosphere is charged. And there are the officials, the referee, Gilmore on his right, Armstrong on his left, Bashar, and still on my left. And there's the goalie. Here's Dick Irvin. Now well, there's Ken Dryden. He has gone all the way in the playoffs for the Canadians. And uh, up the ice, the... Fellow who was his longtime teammate with the Canadian national team out of Winnipeg, Wayne Stevenson. The Flyers face elimination. Kate has sung. Here we go. And it's going to be a noisy night here in Philadelphia. Dupont clearing it out over the line. Zaleski on the right side runs into Robinson. And he's nailed on the board. In behind the net, Schultz took a check against the bird. Now on the boards, they fight for it. They try to get it loose. They struggle. Where is it? Cornwallia looks. Jarvis moves in. Schultz is in there. And from what I can see here, he was getting that left hand against somebody. Well, Dave Schultz was widely quoted after game three to the effect that more of this, and you're looking at what he was referring to, has to go on as far as the Flyers are concerned if they expect to make any headway. So he made good his boast right off the bat, and he is going to the penalty box, and somebody's going with him. And the Canadians moving over there. It's going to be Bob Ganey. So, now wait a minute. Ganey's, no, he just got as far as the door. He talked to the referee. It's Serge Savard who goes in the penalty box. And there's the announcement to Schultz off for Philadelphia and Savard. There it is, Dick, what you can see. Well, Schultz is ending up with a double minor and Savard with one. Roughing is the call and it all comes at the 29 second mark. So the teams will play five aside and then the Flyers will be shorthanded. All things being equal. And so... Sunday evening in Philadelphia. The Flyers trying to stabilize. And the Canadians wanting to wrap it up tonight. Face off to the right of Dryden for Philadelphia. Bridgman and Leach up front. For the Montreal Canadians, LeMaire and Roberts. There's Robinson chasing it. And he collides with Clayton and Bridgman and Arthur Robinson. Here's Leach going in for shot. Smith strikes again, and Reggie Leach gives the Flyers a 1-0 lead. He has got Ken Dryden mesmerized. That's his third straight goal on Dryden, and I'll tell you, they look like replay. Leach from the right side, and that time he appeared to pick the short side on Ken Dryden, and very, very quickly at the 41-second mark, it's 1-0 Flyers. Now the Flyers again, blading at the line. It's over the line, back to center. Bridgman shooting it in there. What a tremendous shot by Leach. And what a score. Here come the Canadians, led by the point on the right side. He fired it in. The Canadians now go in. Watson gets it up on the other side to Bridgman. Bridgman, a pass on the open left side. And it is LaPointe clearing it. Back it goes to Lafleur. Philadelphia leading Montreal one to nothing. Lafleur hands it off to Lemaire ahead on the left side of Robinson. And now here's Lafleur going in, and Jimmy Watson takes over, cleared it up to the line to Bridgman. Layden ahead into the center ice area. Dornhofer gets it back to Watson. Now it goes to Lonsberry, and they clear it into the Canadian zone. And we have Montreal and Philadelphia making changes. Now it's the point out it comes to Rysbrow. The back pass, here's Ganey. Feeding it over the line. Ganey backhand shot. And he fired a couple of feet wide. Now Dornhofer on the boards with Rysbrow. It's fired ahead. Nyrop clearing it out. Here is Rysbrow. Ahead to Ganey. Streaking in on the right side. Ganey shoots right on. And Stevenson blocked that. From the corner, Jimmy Watson. A pass to DuPont out to Lonsbury at center. 
Wings for the left side. Bended into the corner. Bouchard and Lonsbury mix it up. Here come the Canadians. They have the advantage. Savard is under the penalty box. Bobby Clark out on the right side for Barber. Barber bumping with Naira. It's Dupont clearing it down into the Canadian zone. A minute and 42 seconds left in the penalty to Schultz. Here's Dupont trying to get it in front of Barber. And it's Cornwallier. Here's Peter Mahavli into the center ice area with Schultz. Mahavli over the line. Mahavli still with it. Into the corner with Watson. Cornwallier dropped it back. Here's Lafleur over the shot. Back to Lapointe. The point shooting it in. It's off a stick. And Joe Watson trying to clear it out, and he does. Tremendous action here in the first period. Here's Dupont shooting it down the ice. Now a minute left in the penalty. The flare out over the line with Cornwallier Mahavlage. Mahavlage dropping it back to Cornwallier. He gives it to Lafleur. Here's the point shooting it. And a screenshot wide. And let's see a penalty coming up against Philadelphia. And Schultz still has 45 seconds left. It'll be Seleski. Live from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Stanley Cup playoffs. The 80 regular season and playoffs, and that's an all-time NHL record. Looking again at the goal that set that record from the right wing. Leach with an assist from Bridgman, and he just drills it by Ken Dryden. Maybe we can get a look here. Yes, short side. Boy, what a shooter. <laughs> Canadians with a big opportunity here. Lemaire feeding it into Lambert. Here's Lafleur. Lafleur trying to get it loose. It's on the board. Then Kinderchuk for Philadelphia. Can't get by Lapointe. In for Lambert. Here's Lafleur. Over to Lemaire. Lemaire winds up in the shot off the stick. Went off the bird stick over the glass. So the face-off. No, apparently it did not. They're having a discussion, but it's the face-off inside. Well, there is a statue outside the spectrum. It's called Score, 12 feet high, and it has been donated to the city of Philadelphia by the Flyers. It's the Flyers' gift to the city to commemorate the bicentennial here in the United States. And it was presented officially over the weekend here in Stanley Cup Week in Philadelphia. And there are 19 seconds left in the penalty to Schultz. 1.29 left to Selesky to serve. Philadelphia on a goal by their great scorer leads, leading one to nothing. A wave of Canadians hitting the Philadelphia line led by the bird. Here's Lafleur. Over it goes. The point winds up for the shot. A loose puck in front of the net. And a wild tie up. And they hold it out. And Schultz is out of the penalty box. There is the nervous fan. Well, there's Wayne Stevenson flat on his back with the puck outside the line. Best chance seemed to come on the rebound off the shot from LaPointe, who had to hustle to get it away from Schultz, uh, who was chasing him from behind as he came out of the box. Now Lambert in front gets knocked down by Clark. That was a big play by Clark there because the puck could have come out, although Stevenson perhaps had it covered on the play. A lot of talk uh, from the point of game three to now about Bernie Perron, but Fred Shiro said he never had any doubts that he would go again with Stevenson, who Danny really was one of the individual stars of the game the other night. Well, there's a Flyer fan. 108 left in Seleski's penalty. He was off for interference at 344. Montreal, everybody up. Four of them up front with just Savard back on the left point. We have Lapointe, Cournoyer, shut in Mahavlich, Philadelphia trying to get the draw. Lapointe with it. Lapointe clearing it into the corner. On it is Cournoyer. Back it goes. Big Savard winds up and he whistles the shot wide. The point back in for Cornwallier. Here's Mahavli over to the other side. Savard knocks it down and a shot wide again. Here's the point from the point. It goes to Cornwallier. To Peter Mahavli, drop his stick. It's cleared to the line and out. And the Canadians are forced to come back out. And there are 32 seconds left in the penalty. Savard ahead to Mahavli. Mahavli back to Savard. He takes a look. He shoots it. It's loose in front of the net. And it's cleared out over the line by Joe Watson. That is Robinson back there. To Mahavli, to Cornwallier. Over the line, faking the shot. In there's the score! Shot! 
Cormier faking the shot over to shot, and he fired it in to tie it on a power play goal. After a shaky start to their power play, the Canadians have had one going for them for a while now. Cash in. Leach is a great shooter. So is Steve Shot, and, and the shot came from the left wing. Cornway A with the fake shot on the play. That's a play he likes to use. And then Steve Shutt, who has been hot, he had two the other night, just as Leach did, whips it home. A power play goal for the Canadians, and it's tied 1-1. Cornway and the hob, Leach assisting on that tying goal by Shot. Here is Kelly on the move, in over the line. Bouchard after him, Kelly centering it. Now Chris. He's out there and he has fresh legs. Kelly bumping with Robinson. Here's Chris trying to get it loose. And the play is stopped. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Going to be a penalty here. It will be Barber of Philadelphia. And Dick Barber is having a rough series. Certainly he is not producing commensurate with his immense talent on the ice. And now he runs into a... Big penalty here, and Roberts has done a great job checking Barber. Barber, a great scorer. He's off for high sticking at 9.54. The fourth minor penalty called against Philadelphia so far by referee Lloyd Gilmore. The Canadians have drawn just one. So there you see the scoreboard situation. Danny, this is, I think it's, it's safe to say, a different flyer club as they start this game tonight. They're hustling, they're working, the fans are worked up. But strange to say, the only shot they have had so far, and we're almost at the halfway point of the period, the only shot was the goal by Leach. Here we see the reason for the penalty call against the Flyers' number seven, Bill Barber. It's a high-sticking call, and we don't quite finish it, but it was the reason. <laughs> Montreal won, Philadelphia won. Canadians turning out of their own zone. And Lafleur takes a Savard pass, goes to center, rip it into the corner, Lambert moving in along with Mahabali. Mahavlich and Zaleski. Good work by Mahavlich. Back to Savard. Here's the third. Trying to get a shot. He does to a sharp angle. And Stevenson was there. Here's the point. The point shooting it in there. And it went by Lambert and Dupont and Zaleski. Shoots it down to Dryden. A minute and 15 seconds left in the penalty. Here is Savard. The pass goes to Lemaire. He hopped over the line. And it's Dupont sending the Canadians back down the end. This has been a rollicking first period. Shot starting out over on the right wing. Here comes LaPointe clearing it in. LaFleur against Clark. Clark to Dupont to Watson. And they combine, they've got it back down the ice. The Flyers doing an excellent job here of killing off the penalty to Barber. And now they have killed off a minute and 20 seconds. Now Lafleur shakes off Clark, gathers speed, goes to center, down to the line, fades to the far side, in for shot, shot centered it. Back it comes, here's Robinson. Robinson couldn't keep it in, it was Clark who swept it out. Bouchard with a long shot. He didn't get too much on it. Scotty Bowman making changes. So we look at the Philadelphia bench. It's been a tough past couple of days here in this city for this hockey team. They couldn't even practice yesterday. They went out to a suburban rink at one of the local universities and the ice was no good. It was just slushy and full of water, so they had to call things off. Bill Barber in the penalty box. 13 seconds remaining in his penalty. 8-19 left in the first period. The Canadians and the Flyers tied 1-1. And Don Seleski has now skated to the penalty box area to say something to Bill Barber. And the face-off inside the Philadelphia line. Risebrow against Kinderchuk. Kinderchuk here to the, to the board. Risebrow to Bouchard. Go! Rampage in the series. Did anybody touch that? I don't think so, Danny. Pierre Bouchard, given credit for the winning goal as the game ended the other night, gets a go ahead goal here as he lets one go. He can shoot the puck a lot harder than this, and it gets by everybody. It's his second playoff goal in two nights, and not very much playing time, really, in two periods, you might say. He had only one playoff goal in his career up to this year. So Bouchard's goal, again, Montreal on a power play. 
And it's 2-1 Canadians. And there was a short draw shot right on. Bladen clearing it out. Bouchard at his own line. Ahead it goes on the left side with Watson touching it. That is icing against Montreal. And it's getting quiet here in the spectrum. But I would have to agree with you, Dick, that Philadelphia team, the team looked very tired on Thursday, but they seem to have a lot of drive tonight. It's a close-up of Stevenson on the shot from Bouchard, and it just beats him. I don't believe he was screened on the play. There was a lot of room out in front of him. Rice Brown on the assist. It is Chris, Kelly, and Leach. Leach showing his prolific scoring talents in this series. Now doing double duty. Bouchard hopped from the corner. Ganey cleared it ahead. Rice Brown couldn't make contact. Watson after it. And that's another icing call against Montreal. 7.46 left in this, the first period. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Two minutes and 45 seconds to play. In the first period, Montreal 2, Philadelphia 1, Philadelphia. Everybody up for the face-off, but somebody moved prematurely. So that operation again will be executed. And we have Bridgman, Lonsbury, and Dornhofer for Philadelphia. It is Jarvis, Chartres for Montreal. Now shot by Bladen, and it rolls right into Dryden. The Flyers went a long time between hard shots at Dryden, actually, from Leach's goal at 41 seconds to the one that Barber took. They had one in between by Leach, but it wasn't difficult at all. This time, in their fourth shot of the period, it changes direction on the shot from Bladen from the right point. Canadians fail to clear it out. Dornhofer in for Bridgman. He's nailed in on the board. And there's a penalty coming up to Guy Lapointe. Boy, I'll tell you, Gary Dornhopper risked evening things up that time with the run. He took a Jock Lemaire, but Lapointe, not much doubt about that one. And the Canadians will be playing shorthanded for the first time in the game. The only other penalty Montreal took was when Savard went off along with Schultz. And it's Lapointe off for holding. Seventeen thirty-two, the time of the penalty. And so the Flyers get their first power play opportunity. Both Montreal goals have come while they have been enjoying a man advantage. Steve shut at 540, Pierre Bouchard at 1148. This penalty at 17.32 to Guy Lapointe. And a big opportunity for Philadelphia to get back on even terms before the end of the first period. They go now with a power play alignment of Clark, Dornhofer, and Leach up front. It is Barber on the left side. Good enough over on the right point. Face off to the left of Dryden. And the crowd getting enthusiastic once again. Jarvis from Montreal with Savard, Robinson, and Gaty. They share the linesman having difficulty getting the players into their proper positions. And I think finally we are ready. Dornhofer bumping Robinson. They struggle in the corner. Clark trying to get it loose and the play is stopped. And with 221 left in the first period. And there you see the scoreboard situation. Danny, you mentioned the checking of the Canadians. A couple of times in the period, the Flyers look like they might be able to get a break. A three on one, even a three on two. Those the guys in the red sweaters, so far anyway, tonight have just been skating, skating, skating. And of course, the Flyers have talked about that throughout this series. Good enough shooting it. And he's wide with it. There's the bird from the corner. Gets an opening and he shoots it down the up. A minute and 40 seconds now left in the penalty. Philadelphia back to organize. Four checking for Montreal, Ganey and Jarvis. Here comes Bar Bobby Clark out on the left side. He goes to center to the Montreal line. Drifts it off to the corner. There's Leach going in after it. Going off for bumping Robinson along with Leach. And it's Ganey moving in after Dornhofer. Well, Gary Dornhofer.
Bernhofer is the flyer who seems to be the object of attention. Bob Ganey, the Canadian, who took the run into the boards with Dornhofer there. But no penalties. The faceoff will be in the zone to the left. And the fact that no penalties result, the fans don't like it. Canadians make a change. Roberts and Lemaire taking over from Jarvis and Ganey. Look at how that last little altercation took place. There's Dornhofer moving in, and now Ganey joins the crowd. And now Dornhofer is replaced. One minute and 24 seconds left in the penalty to Gila Point. Montreal 2, Philadelphia 1, nearing the end of the first period. There's Clark on the move against Robinson. Leach in for Clark. Clark gets it back to the point. Here's DuPont over the other side. The blade he winds up for the shot. It's the Flyers tie it up again. Penalties playing a part in this hockey game. This is a power play goal. I don't know who touched it. After Bladen let it go, the puck just sort of caromed into the net with everybody piling up. It might have been Barber. I don't think Bobby Clark got his stick on it. Not the angle we have here, but in any event, it's a Philadelphia goal. And it's Bladen who gets the goal. They have announced Bladen who let it go from the right point with the traffic jam in front of Dryden. Dupont and Clark assisting. And at 18.48, it's tied 2-2. So the Philadelphia Flyers getting a power play goal. They have tied it at two. Here come the Canadian shot going in. Stevenson ahead to Seleski. Here is Bladen up on the right side. Gets by Mahavlich, ran into Bouchard, gives it to Lonsbury. Lonsbury over it goes right in front of the net. And Seleski failed to get hold of it to put it in with Dryden going down. Great scoring opportunity there for Philadelphia. Here's Peter Mahavlich. Mahavlich going in to Lafleur. He shoots. Have an enormous save there by Stevenson. The action picking up again. Now it's shot into Lafleur. His pass is grabbed off by Bladen, who cleared it out over the line. LaPointe flicking it in. Stevenson watching it carefully, and he gets a whistle. Well, we've had a correction the time of that goal. 18.20 now, I am told. And it's Bladen from DuPont and Clark. Now, here's a close-up look at what was ha going on in front of the Canadians' net when the shot came in from Tom Bladen. Dryden flattened on the play, and the puck in behind him. So it's 2-2, 42 seconds remaining in the opening period. Montreal 2, Philadelphia 2. It is Rice, Brown, Lambert, and Cournoyer for the Canadians. For Philadelphia, Clark, Barber, and Chris. From the face off, Risebra hooked it. Now it is Watson coming out over the line with Clark on the right wing. Clark stopping to pick it up, and his pass goes off a leg. Here is Chris shooting it ahead. Savard playing it off the boards into the center ice area. Chris shooting it back in. It is Robinson for Montreal. Dornhofer after him. Risebrow cleared it down on the left side. Good enough. Feeds it in and it's called on the offside with 11 seconds remaining in the opening period. And the teams have divided the four goals that have been scored. And a little bit of a hassle along, the, along in front of us here, alongside the Canadian's bench. I don't know... What about? It's very minor. The fans in behind hollering something. Now it is Jimmy Watson. Over it goes. Good enough to Crisp on the right side. Here's Dornhofer clearing it in. It bounced in there. It took a nasty bounce in on Dryden. And luckily for him, it hit him on the chest. At the end of one period, it is 2-2. And the fans give the Flyers quite an ovation as they skate off. That would have been some fun had that one eluded Dryden. They received credit for a shot, but the blue light was on. Shots on goal in the period by Montreal 11 and by Philadelphia 7. 
The teams are tied 2-2. Hockey night in Play about to get underway in the second period with the score tied at two. We have Clark at center against Jarvis. And it is Ganey chopping it in on the left side. Moving in for Montreal, number 21, Jarvis. Now on the right side, Neat. It's off his stick. There's Jarvis shooting it. And he had an excellent scoring opportunity. There's Sharkrow with Kelly in the corner. And McAlarkey now taking over for Philadelphia. We're going to have a couple of penalties here. Bob Ganey and Bobby Clark are the two players involved. And from the quiet near solitude of the referee's room, Lloyd Gilmore is right back in the middle of it before over 17,000 fans here at the Spectrum. And yes, both players are going off. The fans reacted. Ganey was the one who seemed to start things. Clark is in there as well. Maybe say Ganey started. He was involved, certainly. Twenty-one seconds, and they are both off for slashing. There it is. A lot of line juggling going on, Danny. In that first period, the Canadians used 16 different forward combinations. The Flyers used 14. And now here's Savard winding up for a shot off his leg, Dupont's leg. And good enough cleared it into the corner to Leach. He feeds it ahead. Good enough couldn't get it. And it is Robinson feeding it over on the other side. Here is Savard. Savard off the boards for Robinson. They are playing five aside here in the second period. Robinson bumping with Barber. They fight for it along the boards. They get a whistle for a face-off. The goal we're giving a change here. The goal now. Goal has been credited to Barber. The second Philadelphia goal has been credited to Barber, so make it now read Barber from... No, I don't know who. I missed the assist. We can't hear the PA here. We apologize for some of our hesitation, but it is just very muffled at the point we are in this building. Now it's Bouchard ahead to Lambert. He hit Risebrow. DuPont got enough of him to knock him off balance. And good enough, clear to the hand, it's down the ice. There will be no call for icing that one off the stick. Now then, LaPointe, for checking for Philadelphia. Chris, that goes to Lambert, out to Risebrow at center. He hits the Philadelphia line, there's the shot. And Stevenson going down, got his glove on it. Jordan Hopper, beats it to good enough on the right side. He ripped the shot off the glass. And it is Chris in behind. Here's good enough. Over on the other side it goes. Dupont into Chris to good enough. There's the shot. Right in front. Dornhofer was flattened by Bouchard. Now Lambert swings it out to the point in the center ice area. The point takes the shot high off the glass. And Philadelphia coming back, led by Dupont on the left side. In over the line, a low shot, and Dryden is going to cover up on that. Well, the Flyers' second goal now officially. Barber from Bladen and Dupont at 18.20 in the first period. Well, Ken Dryden received a big assist from Pierre Bouchard that time. Bouchard clearing Gary Darnhofer out from in front of the Canadian's net, and he really got him out of there. That's the kind of a thing that makes coaches happy. Reggie Leach, 19 goals. He has 24 points now. The record for playoff points, 27. Now Philadelphia with Barber twisting and turning in the corner. Barber still with it. He goes down. And the crowd reacts on that. Montreal clearing it out. And there's Bladen Black at the line. Over it goes to Joe Watson. Watson feeds it ahead on the right side. Robinson going in for Montreal. And in there for Philadelphia is Leach. Now Barber going after Robinson and forces him back. Robinson up on the left side. Here's Roberts. The penalized players are back on. Ganey is over the line, but there was offside on the left wing. Live from the Spectrum Jet Center with Doug Jarvis coming out, and the Flyers continue their pattern. They have played well. We talked about the Canadians forechecking and working and keeping the Flyers off balance early in this period. 
It's been the reverse of that situation here for the last four or five minutes. Barber comes back to talk to McAlargy. And so it'll be Clark, Barber, and Leach. And Mark Malargi and Watson in over the line. He goes back to the line. McAlargi into the corner to Clark. He gives it to Leach. There's the shot! And an enormous save by Dryden. On a bullet drive by Leach. There's Leach again shooting it. It bounces in front. And the Canadians starting out. Here is Jarvis in the center ice area and over the Philadelphia line. Tries to set up Roberts, and Barber takes it for Philadelphia. Out it goes to Jimmy Watson. He cleared it into Canadian territory, and it's Robinson. Not for Roberts. He couldn't get it. And that is the signal now for the team to make changes while the play goes on. McAlargy clearing it into Canadian territory. Bridgman bumped the point. The point knocks Bridgman down. And there's going to be a penalty against Montreal. Live from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Stanley Cup playoff. Here as he dumps Mel Bridgman. It's the second time the point's been penalized. The second time the Canadians have been shorthanded. When he was in the penalty box in the first period, Barber scored a power play goal for Philadelphia to tie the game 2-2. So the point's back in the box. And Barber's back out on the ice with Clark and Leach and good enough and Dupont. Philadelphia Flyers fighting gamely for their hockey lives in this one tonight. An opportunity now to take the lead if they can cash in on this power play. And toward that end, Freddie Shiro has Clark, Barber, Leach good enough. And DuPont, and they're all across the Canadian's line. There's Robinson playing it over to the side. Barber takes it for Philadelphia. Barber turning around. He takes a look. What's he going to do with it? The pass may go right here in front of good enough. But Robinson came up with a sparkling defensive play to get his stick on it. And the Flyers are back in their own zone with a minute and 35 seconds left in the Canadian's penalty. Here they come, led by Dupont, Leach, Barber, and Clark. Clark is over the line. Clark puts on the brakes over it, goes to good enough. His pass goes off to the corner. Here is Leach along the boards. Back it goes to Dupont into the corner. Barber takes a look again. Leach is in front. Dupont clearing it back in. There's Clark behind the net. There's a shot. And it goes back into the corner on the rebound. Canadians trying to clear it out. Here's Lemaire having his difficulties against Dupont. And Clark keeps it in for Philadelphia. Into Dupont in the corner. Back it goes to Barber. Barber takes the shot. And it goes off Nyroff's hand to the corner. It's going to be in front. They score! Oh, the Flyers have scored on the Andre Dupont, the Moose, number six, after terrific pressure on the part of the Flyers on the power play. And Bobby Clark worked his heart out. And it paid off. Barber shot a good stop by Dryden, but Dupont moving in from the point position, and he went into his victory dance. And the fans here are not booing. They are yelling, Moose, Moose. He was right there from picking up the rebound from Barber's shot after Clark had worked to get that book in the corner. And the Flyers have a three to two lead. Now the Canadians roar back to the attack. Philadelphia taking the lead three to two. Shot is knocked to the ice. Here's Peter Mahavli trying to get it. Shot away. He's ridden it on the board by Schultz. Now here's the backhand shot by Schultz. And Shutt, you can see, is playing without his helmet. Schultz and Mahavlich are having words. And they will face off eventually to the right of Stevens. Now well, the period had been played in very straight fashion up to this point, really. And there is our friend the Moose again, celebrating 
in extra special fashion right now because his favorite hockey player has just scored. Dupont from Barber and Clark at 13.59. Dupont in front. Watch him as he breaks loose from Savard. And he's right there for the rebound. And there goes the dance. From the faceoff. And Schultz on the left side. Starting out with Zaleski at center to the Canadians line and they jump it in there delicately and shut fail to clear it out. Now it's McClure going to the right side. And he fired it ahead over the glass over the penalty box. And with five minutes and 17 seconds left in the second period Philadelphia leading Montreal three to two. Dupont on the power play from Barber and Clark at 13.59. So penalties playing a key part of this hockey game and the Flyers trailed in the shots on goal at one point in the first period by six or seven to one I think it was have now evened it up that's Philadelphia on the left and it's 16 16 overall at this point in the game face off in the center ice area here is Bridgman he's upended by Savard he's on the puck against the board and Bridgman looking at the referee wow well, Danny Lloyd Gilmore, you know, as he talked to me in the first uh, intermission, he's had a long career. He's seen a few stumbles, intentional stumbles in his day. He wasn't going for that one. Bridgman didn't argue. Now it is Jimmy Watson riveting a shot toward the corner. Robinson clearing out the center. Here's Rysbrow going in with Cornwaye. And Watson cleared it to the line, not out. Rise brow against Jimmy Watson. Bridgman is in there looking for it. And Bridgman clears it out. He was long carry. And he almost got a breakaway with Lambert coming back in the nick of time. There's Cornwaye at his own line. Canadians having difficulty. Now they start out with Robinson. Robinson over the line. Robinson shooting it off a leg. He centered it in front. And it's clear to the line and out. Robinson couldn't get there in time to keep it in. Now Canadians. Risebrow on the left side. He feeds it into the corner. Jimmy Watson ahead. Lonsbury on the left wing. Bumping there with Risebrow who went down. Here is shot over the line. Shot stop. Takes the shot. It's a weak one. And it is wide. Michael Argy gives it to Jimmy Watson. Out on the left side. And LaPointe. Beats it ahead. The shot couldn't get anywhere against McAlargy. Here's Bouchard knocking McAlargy down. And Watson shot it ahead. And there you see a portion of the happy Flyer fans at this stage. They've got to be happy because right now Flyers are leading 3-2. to two And there are 3 minutes and 45 seconds left. And Leach almost had an opportunity to break into the clear on the right side. There's Bouchard running into Clark. Bouchard shot it in. DuPont watching Roberts. Good enough. Flicked it ahead. It's into the center ice area. And LaPointe hands it off to Lemaire. Up it goes. Roberts backhand to get in. There's Ganey on the prowl watching. Good enough. Good enough. Working from the corner. There to the head. Clark. Lost it. Barber recovers. Barber shooting it down into Canadian territory. He follows in. Now then, Ganey on the left wing. Out it goes to Lemaire with Roberts and LaPointe. Here's Lemaire. Drop pass to Roberts. He shoots it and it was blocked by Dupont. It's centered by Roberts who went through the crease. Here's Robinson. Robinson trying to center it and it's broken up by Barber. Barber coming down. He's knocked to the ice by Lemaire. And LeMaire is going off. Canadians have been hurt the only two times that they have played shorthanded in this hockey game. The Flyers have scored. Here they are again. LeMaire in the box. It's Lemaire for hooking at 17.20. I see some of the Canadian players and some of the Canadian fans making as if Barber took a dive, going for the dive position or going through the action. Lemaire saying, hey, not me, not my fault. 
but the referee disagreed. Gilmore sent him to the box. Lemaire for hooking at 17-20. And a new combination out here, Danny, for the Flyers on the power play. They've got Kindrichuk centering Dornhofer and Lonsbury. Montreal with Jarvis and Rysbrow up front. Savard and LaPointe on the defense. And LaPointe cleared it to center. Bladen gives it to Watson ahead. Kindrichuk in over the line. Here is Kindrichuk. He's getting set to do something with it. It's back to Watson over on this side to Bladen. Bladen keeping it in for Dornhofer. Here is Lonsbury from the corner. Dornhofer around the net. Watson at the point winds up for the shot. Buck loose in front. Jarvis is up in it. And there's a penalty coming up to Philadelphia. It will be Dornhofer. The Flyers lose their advantage after just 33 seconds of the power play opportunity as Gary Dornhofer joins Jacques Lemaire in the penalty box area. Two minutes for hooking. So at, eight, at 17.53, it's Dornhofer for hooking. And we're going to take a look at it here now. Jarvis is the player who is hooked. And there's the reason for the penalty. Danny, it's warm in this building. This is the first playoff game you and I have worked that I can recall seeing water on the ice during a game. It's so warm, and I, well, I'll tell you in a minute about the Canadians. And now it is Watson. That is Jimmy Watson clearing it in. Rich Seleski moving in, driving away out of the net. But Seleski and LaPointe are going to get a whistle and a face-off, and that enables Dryden to get back rather quickly. Yes, Dick, what were you going to tell me about all the heat that you're experiencing in Philadelphia? Coming back from the referee's room after interviewing Lloyd, I had to wait for the Canadians to pass in front on their way out to the ice, and every player was perspiring in a manner that you'd think they were just coming off the ice after the end of a period, rather than going back on, coming out of the dressing room. It's very hot in this building tonight. Teams playing five aside. Philadelphia meeting Montreal 3 to 2 in the second period. There's the bird going in against Bridgman. Zaleski working his way along the boards. The pass goes in behind the net. And it is the bird taking a look. Shoved in on the boards by Bridgman. Buck rolls back into Philadelphia territory. And Lemire is 52 seconds left in his penalty. Here's Zaleski going in on the right side. And it's called on the offside, and Dornhofer with a minute and 22 seconds to serve in his hooking penalty. And again, the reminder that the showdown's a showdown. Coming up in the second intermission, Daryl Sittler and Danny Grant, along with Rogie Vashon. Harry Dornhofer, an original flyer, as he is so often referred to by broadcasters and writers. It's your choice on the showdown. Whom do you pick? Oh. Well, I can't do anything but let you have the Maritimer, I guess. It wouldn't be well, fair, that's would not, it? That's not fair. If he wins, he'll just be nice. <laughs> now here's Severd. Severd at the line. Over to LaPointe up on the right side. Off is Dick Joe Watson. Cleared it ahead. LaPointe back in for Peter Mahavlich. Mahavlich off the boards. Here's Mahavlich. Mahavlich staying with it. Tied up neatly by Bladen. LaPointe flipping in front. And shot put and directed on the target. Now Lee failed to pick up a pass. And we have less than a minute to go in this, the second period. And the puck goes over the boards at the Flyers' bench. That was a pretty close call with Steve Shutt knocking that puck down and bouncing it just inches wide of the post to Stevenson's stick side. We've had a shot and goal for a long time. You might recall a few moments ago we showed you the overall total, 16-16, and that's the way it stands now. And there is a hero for Philadelphia at this particular stage in the hockey game. Moose Dupont, it was his goal in this period that sent Philadelphia ahead 3-2. Face off outside the Montreal blue line. Here is Kinderchuk. 
Sliding it over to Watson. Watson coming in over the Montreal line. Watson getting set. And he fired the shot low and wide. It's centered. And Zaleski was not in a good position to pick it up. Here's Kindrichuk on the board. Lamira's out of the penalty box. The Canadians now with the advantage. Kindrichuk working diligently for Philadelphia. He still has it. Lifted ahead. On the board behind is Zaleski. And Canadians with the fur finally coming up with it. Ahead to Robinson with Lemaire and Lambert. They're in over the Philadelphia line. It's center right in front. He's Cornwallier. He scores. Cornwallier. Captain of the Canadians. And that could be a very, very big goal. It comes with just 11 seconds to play at 1949 as the Canadians rushed up the ice. Lambert was in front. He was taken out, but Cornwallier moving in behind on a backhand right here, and he shovels it. And it wasn't that hard a shot, but it got by Stevenson. So the Canadians with Robinson lugging the puck out of his own blue line area, up ice, and it's Cornwallier. A backhand shot beating Stevenson from close range, and it's tied 3-3. Now with eight seconds left, here's Leach coming in. Swept off his stick by LaPointe. Barber bodying with Roberts. And it's back at the Philadelphia line. That's the end of the second period. And the teams are tied with three goals at the end of two. Shots on goal in the second period. Montreal seven for a two-period total of 18. The Flyers nine, a two-period total of 16. Hockey night in Canada is coming to you live from the Spico Rush of the New York Islanders. Glenn, three of the six goals scored tonight have come in power plays. From a goaltender's standpoint, is there a difference playing when the Canadians are in a power play and the Flyers? Well, I think the difference is, and there is, Dick, I think if, if each team throws out their best five power play uh, people, then it's fairly equal. But the, but the beauty of uh, the Montreal power play is that if one of their lines, say, is at the end of a shift, they're tired when the penalty occurs, they can show out, throw out, excuse me, that, that's, say that, that second line power play group, and they'll, they'll be just as effective as the first. So they have that follow-up thing, that, that bench strength that, that, so, uh, you know, that everybody talks about. And I think that's, that's where they maybe uh, have a little bit over the Flyers. A lot of people thought, that as the series has gone on, they said, well, maybe he'll change to Bernie Perron as far as Fred Shiro is concerned. Are you surprised that it's still Wayne Stevenson? Well, no, Dick, it's too late to, you know, try experiments now. And in this, they don't have any chances to recover if they lose this one. And I don't think, you know, they could take a chance on Bernie maybe not being sharp. And Wayne hasn't played that well. And you got to go with the guy that's in shape and the guy that's, that's been playing for you. Glenn, just very briefly, as we get set to go, is there any one player in the Canadians you played against them, you've seen them in this series, that has impressed you more than anybody else, perhaps? Well, there is, Dick, yes. Larry Robinson, and it's just not my feeling. Everybody in the room was just amazed at this guy. He changed, the, you know, our attitude. And, uh... And that, you know, when somebody does that, that, and plus the fact that he's scoring, and he's been so aggressive. He's neutralized the Flyers. Everybody saw the, the check on Dornhofer the other night. And like I say, he's been the most consistent player the Canadians have. Okay, Glenn, thanks very much. Don't go away. If there's overtime, we might need you again. All right, here's Danny Gallivan. Okay, Dick, and the question uppermost in the minds of hockey fans as the teams line up for the start of the third period, the question is this. Is this going to be the final period of the 1976 Stanley Cup Final Series? Well, we'll know as the period goes along and then as we come into the end of it, they are tied at three goals apiece. And the play is on. Over on the far side, Dornhofer rubbed in on the boards by Ganey. It's cleared in by Robinson. There's Jimmy Watson firing it up to Bridgman on the left side. Bridgman hands it off. Bonsbury couldn't get anywhere, and Robinson pokes it back in. Now there's a pass through center. Savard cleared it back into Philadelphia territory, and it is icing against the Canadians. Well, this is the last goal, the one like Cornway, and that was a power play goal. I lost count of that talking to Chico, but that one too, Dornhofer was in the box. And as everybody was talking about during the intermission, that could... Pain can weigh you down, but you're resilient. And I see how no mess fuels your resilience. Fast-acting, targeted pain relief. Because the deeper you dig, 
the higher you rise. I see hot, no mess. Hockey fans, celebrate your favorite NHL legends at Fanatics.com with official vintage hockey jerseys by Fanatics. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Are you getting the most out of your Medicare plan? Are you sure? Many people with Medicare are eligible for plans that include extra benefits in addition to those found in original Medicare. Benefits like dental, vision, and prescription drug coverage. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. The consultation is free with no obligation to enroll. In addition to hospital and medical coverage, at no extra cost, you could also get coverage for prescription drugs, dental, hearing, vision, and more. In many areas, plans with benefits are available with $0 copays for many services, $0 monthly premiums, or $0 deductibles. That's hospital, medical, prescription drug, dental coverage, and more included in one plan with premiums that may be as low as $0 a month. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll. The consultation is free and there's no obligation to enroll. Call 1-800-403-2491. That's 1-800-403-2491. Hockey is preparing students for the fastest growing careers through future goals. The largest online program teaching students science, technology, engineering, and math. With lessons drawn from the game, students learn the dynamics behind the action as they take their team on an exciting journey to win the Stanley Cup without ever leaving the house. Keep your students sharp at home. Get free online access at NHL.com slash future goals. Canadians with the defense in over the line. It is Kelly and Ganey who are moving about. And now Gilmore tells good enough to get back out over the circle. Here's Cornwallier trying to center it. He gets it again. He gets it to Ganey. Ganey winding up for a shot. It's wide. Cornwallier knocked into the boards by good enough. Here's good enough for and it's picked up by DuPont. Ahead it goes, Chris, in the center ice area. DuPont shooting it into the Canadian zone. And here's Kelly into the corner. He gives it off to Chris. He lost it to Lemaire. Lemaire's left wing pass goes down the ice. Here's the penalty coming up to Philadelphia. Good enough. Oh, that's a critical call with 10.57 remaining in the third period. The 9.03 mark of this third period. Score tied. The call is interference as good enough dumped the Canadians' Bob Ganey. So a critical moment in the hockey game. And the Canadians, who have three power play goals, they are three for three in that department, have a power play opportunity. The first for either club here in the third period. It will be Mahavli shot. And a Fleur, Robinson, and Savard on the power play for Montreal. And defending for Philadelphia, we have Clark and Barber up front, DuPont on defense with what? This is a big moment in the hockey game with the score tied at three goals. Mahavli in on the boards against Watson. Shut is looking for it. They try to get it loose. Now it goes to Lafleur. Here's Lafleur. Back it goes to Savard. The bird shoots to the head and is shot down the ice by Watson. A minute and 35 seconds left in the penalty. Canadians organizing on the power play. They have Lafleur coming out with Chuck Mahomley, Ted Robinson, a long shot. Long shot by Lafleur. And again, that's over the glass. Well, the crowd hanging on. Quiet, really, at the moment. Even that last clearing shot by the Flyers didn't get as large a cheer as something like that usually does in this building. Because they realize now the gravity of this situation for the home team, the Canadians, getting the mad advantage. Lloyd Gilmore sending good enough to the penalty box. He has a minute and 24 left to serve. Scotty Bowman sending out Cornwallier with Mahavlich and Lambert, Lafleur back along with LaPointe. 
No change for Philadelphia. Now we are set it from the face off. Here's Peter Mahavli trying to get a shot and he hit a player in the bounce near the corner. Here's the point shooting it in. Mahavli centered it and Clark has it for Philadelphia. Coming away with Barber. Clark cutting it on the right side and he fired a vicious shot to the top left hand corner. Now it's the fur for Montreal coming out with Mahavli shot over the line. Mahavlich throws the center to the Philadelphia line. Here's Mahavlich working his way, and he sent it right in front. And Lambert couldn't get a stick on it. Now to the far side. Here's Jimmy Watson. Ahead it goes to Seleski. Kindred Chuck is on the other side. And the point cleared it into the corner to Cornwaye. Cornwaye ahead to Lambert. At center, across the line. He drops it to the point. Here's the point feeding it in, and Bladen has it for Philadelphia. Philadelphia shooting it down the ice with 20 seconds left in the penalty. Now Roberts ahead to Lemaire. Lemaire dropped it into the corner. Ganey going after Joe Watson shot it. He hit Roberts. Now Watson cleared it up. Robinson knocked it down, keeping it in for Montreal. Here's Ganey going to the far side. Ganey giving it to Savard. He spins around. The penalty has expired. Robert centered it. Now it's Ganey. Ganey keeping it in for the Canadians. In on the board. Savard bumped by Goodenough. Now Ganey is going to get a penalty. Ganey is going off. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Canadians has been penalized for holding at 11:26. The Canadians had some pretty good pressure inside the Flyers' line, even after Goodenough had returned to the ice. But right here, Ganey puts the grab on the stick of Oris Kindrachuk. Down goes Kindrachuk, and off goes Ganey to the penalty box. So the crowd has come alive as the Flyers get their first power play chance with the score tied 3-3. And a big opportunity here for Philadelphia. Canadians with the point. Shooting it down there. Philadelphia with Leach, Barber, and Clark, along with Goodena and DuPont. Barber cleared it into the corner. There's the bird failing to shoot it out over the line. It's back to Goodena. Over on this side to DuPont. DuPont into the corner to Leach, into Clark. Clark trying to center it against the bird. The bird gets a high stick, and he holds the puck against the board. And the Canadian's motion that Serge Savard may be in some trouble. And the trainer, Pierre Mayer, leaves the bench and has gone quickly to the scene in the corner to the right of Dryden in the Montreal zone. Savard still down on the ice on his knees after moving in along the boards on that play. And there you see him. So this is not a good turn of events for Montreal as Savard has been just simply outstanding in the playoffs and I feel daddy in particular this series more than the first two but right now he is in a little bit of trouble and we are going to take another look at it just to see what happens apparently it's a stick involved up around the face and there is Bobby Clark and oh that's it right there so Savard stays out Shakes it off, and he's still on the ice with Jarvis, Roberts, and LaPointe. A minute and 29 seconds left in the penalty to Ganey. And now Freddie Shiro wants to make a change. He's sending Dornhofer on, but Gilmore says no. And they have to stick with the alignment they have on the ice at the present time. Leach, Clark, Barber, DuPont, and good enough. Canadians with Jarvis at center. Jarvis gets the draw it's into the corner. Here's Clark. Clark trying to center it. Barber has it. Dupont closing in for the shot. And he rips one off the corner glass. Here come the Canadians. Jarvis with Roberts. Jarvis cutting in on the left side. Over to Roberts. And he couldn't control it in front of the net. Now Philadelphia coming back on the right side. Leach trying to pick it up. Roberts cleared at the center. Here is Jarvis. 
Jarvis feeds it into Philadelphia territory, and there are 55 seconds left in the penalty to Gady. Score tied at three goals, 7.20 remaining in the third period. Philadelphia having difficulty getting their power play organized. Now it is Lonsbury out over the line with Kindrichuk and Dornhofer. It's off Lonsbury's stick. Dryden tried to clear it. He hit Lonsbury. Here's Jimmy Watson closing in. And Roberts getting a break. Roberts coming down on the right side. Winds up for the shot. And he was nowhere near the net. Now it's Lonsbury coming to center. In over the line with Watson and Dornhofer. Lonsbury shooting it. Another shot. Oh! Boy, what a scoring chance, and we've had a few of them with the Canadians getting breaks at one end, but watch this one. The puck gets in behind Dryden on the deflection as he makes the save, and then it goes behind him. He turns around. The puck, he looked in the net, I guess. How can you explain it? I mean, he just flopped, and the puck stayed out. What a chance. Dornhofer was involved in the play, and Ken Dryden making like an acrobat. Grab the puck, and it's still a 3-3 hockey game. Eight seconds left in the penalty to Bob Ganey. We're going to take another look at that last chance, Danny, in from back of the net. And there's Dornhofer's shot coming in. Now watch Dryden. Sort of bounce clear, but the first bounce was the dangerous one as it went in behind him. And the Canadians got the Argo bounce that time. And as you say, Dick, eight seconds left in the penalty. 6.42 remaining in regulation time. And the teams are tied at three goals. Philadelphia, everybody up for this face-off between Kindrichuk and Mahavli. Now they fight for it. Dornhofer giving it to Bladen over. Goes to Kindrichuk, and the shot was blocked by Robinson. Ganey out of the penalty box. Going into Philadelphia territory. Here's Dornhofer coming back through center. He chopped it into the corner. Kaleski going after Robinson, who knocked it into the center ice area. Watson clearing it ahead. Finally picked up by Kaleski, and he rolls it into Canadian territory. Here is Robinson, failing to clear it out against Bridgman. Now he tries it again. Shot can't get it out. Here's Kaleski. Kaleski is checked. A fur breaking away with shot at center. The Fleur in over the line. Over and close and shut going in for the shot. And it was Joe Watson who was in front of that one. There's the Fleur. He scores! The Fleur! The Fleur putting Montreal ahead. 4-3. And the Canadians pour off the bench. 5.42 left in regulation time. And the man who was the National Hockey League's Art Ross scoring champion has given his team a very important go-ahead goal. As you see it there, Mahovlich to Lafleur, and he had that room on the top on Stevenson's stick side, and the Philadelphia goaltender did not move on the play. So Guy Lafleur whips home a goal to give the Canadians a 4-3 lead with 5.42 left in regulation time. Mahovlich and shut on the assist, and the time is 14 18. And we have a delay. Well, they had come close, Danny. It's the old story. I missed them at one end, and I a Kinderchuk shot that was blocked by the Montreal defense. He had Seleski wide open on the left side. That could have been a big one. Elected to shoot, it was blocked before it got to drive. And now, Philadelphia trailing by one. And their hockey life for this year in serious jeopardy. Canadians, Risebrough, was dumped. Here is Barber. It'll be all out now for the Flyers. They clear it into the Canadian zone. Savard laid it on the board. Now Gainey, he's up in there. Gets it in to Risebrough. He tried to hit Cornwallie with a lead pass. Cornwallie stays with it, trying to jam it from the short side, and it's Leeson, passing it out. Finally, it's grabbed off by Bladen. 
Played in that center with Leach, winds up for the shot, riding smartly, kicked it over the glass to his left. So the goal again, Lafleur from Mahovlich had shot at 14-18. The Canadians trailing 3-2 in the final minute of the second period, tied it on Cornwallier's goal, and now they have gone ahead and the Flyers, as both teams look so exhausted in this oppressive heat here in the Spectrum tonight, know that they got to get one back in a hurry. Five minutes exactly remaining in this third period of play. And you see Marcel Pelche uh, just moving back out of the picture. Barry Ashby, the Flyers official family. And Keith Allen, the general manager. Their expressions tell it all. Ace off to the left of Dryden. It will be Kindrichuk against Mahavli. Schultz and Selesky playing up. Now here's Chuck. And head on the right side to look forward. He watched and dropped back the shot. Shot is upended by Schultz. Here's Lafleur out to Peter Mahavli. He scores! Mahavli. And they empty the Canadian bench again. Well, there was a lot of talk, Danny, about Lafleur and Mahavli not being up to par in this series. Harry Sinton was quoted the other day as saying, it's just amazing how the Canadians keep winning with Lafleur and Mahavlich not playing as well as they did in the regular season. But here is Lafleur scoring at 14-18, and now Pete Mahavlich with perhaps the biggest goal of the hockey game as he backhands it after the setup from Lafleur. And this one comes with 4.44 left in regulation time. Mahavlich scoring, Lafleur and Shutt in on the assist. So the big line, as it's called in Montreal, connects back to back and it's now 5-3 Canadians and I remember Red Fisher at the end of the second period when the Montreal team got that late goal we asked him for a prediction and he said it'll be 5-3 for Montreal it's 5-3 for Montreal now but the game is not over four minutes and 44 seconds left Philadelphia team, as we all know, an explosive club, but now you will see Montreal at the art of checking, something at which they are most proficient. Now Philadelphia starting out, Kindrichuk ahead to Celeste, broken up by Robinson, and he ripped it back into Philadelphia territory. Now Jimmy Watson from the side of the net, starting out, Lambert and Lemaire for checking. Here's Kindrichuk back on the right side, trying to get through there. It centers, and Lambert gobbles it up for Montreal and shoots it down the ice. And the clock indicating exactly four minutes left in the third period. Seleski shooting it in. The point in the corner, he flicked it over the glass unwittingly, and a scramble for a souvenir, and it was finally grabbed by an alert young man. 15-16, the time of the last Montreal goal. Mahavlich from the and shut. They scored twice in 58 seconds, and the defending champions now realize they have 3.53 to go. And Dick, if Canadians should hold on and win, they will be arriving at Dorval and not at Mirabel. It'll be Dorval if they should win. But as we say, it's not over yet. There's a shot to the short side by DuPont. Here's Shutt, chopping it ahead. Lafleur stumbles. And now it is DuPont in behind the net. Lafleur and Mahavlich and Shutt for checking. DuPont hands it off to Bladen ahead on the left side. Off Lonsbury. Bouchard clearing it down the ice. That will be icing if DuPont touches it before Lafleur. He does, and the faceoff in the Canadian zone. A 3.20 left in the third period. Well, Scotty Bowman, I'm sure, even though his face might not show up, breathing a little bit easier. This team has just played, uh, what can you say, so well. And the Flyers hoping to catch up. And the crowd now starting to give the Philadelphia Flyers a standing ovation. This is really something. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in regulation time. Now Philadelphia, everybody up. Here is Ganey. He clears it down the ice. 
And that is going to be another icing against the Canadians. I don't think that Coach Bowman likes that uh, pattern of performance. He would prefer if they just dump it up because when you ice it, you're bringing that face off deep into Canadians' territory and with these sharpshooters like Barber and Leach and Clark and Watson and good enough out there. One goal here can make a tremendous difference. There is what Bowman would like to see happen, and it happened with Robinson just dumping it to center. And it's over the glass, over the boards at the penalty box. 3.03 left in regulation time. Dick, talking about banquets, uh, they'll be on the banquet tour, and Ivan Lambert will be at the University of Prince Edward Island at the Panthers Booster Celebrity Dinner on June the 4th. Now here's Ganey intercepting at center. He hit Leach with it. Now Leach coming in again on his wrong wing. Sabard after him and knocked it away. In on the boards. They fight for it. Here's Barber. Leach is tied up. He gets it loose. He cleared it into the crease. And Dryden on the short side went down and gloved it. 239 left. Good play by Reg Leach, Danny, that time. He hung tough after it appeared as though Savard had him stopped on the play. And once again, the fans rise to their feet. Here's Leach, 27. He breaks away from the checking and tries for that short side sweep around. Dryden hung tough and made the save. Now from the faceoff, Seleski backhanded it. But it had not been done fairly, so they'll do it over again. It is Kindrichuk, Lonsbury, Zaleski, DuPont, and Bladen. Canadians leading five to three. Finally, after LaPointe couldn't get it out over the line, Lemaire shot it again into the penalty box. Well, I guess the fans are watching the clock almost as much as they're watching the play right now. Time ticks away. Here is Bladen bouncing it into Dryden. On at the point. He shoots it off the board down the ice. It's not going to go over the goal line. And it is Lemaire for checking on DuPont. Cornwallier tried to tie up Lonsbury. DuPont on the left side. Knocked down by Lemaire. Cornwallier at the line. He falls. And Kindrichuk has it with Seleski. Flyers clearing it into the corner. There is Bouchard ahead to Mahavlich. He's jammed in on the boards by Zaleski. Zaleski going in now against Bouchard. Kinderchuk back to Bladen. There's the shot. And it goes to DuPont. His shot is stopped by LaPointe. Barber takes it. And the rebound. Kinderchuk almost had it handed to him by Dryden. Now, here's Zaleski around the net. Out in front it comes. And Cornwallier with a minute and 30 seconds gives it to Mahavli. He flicked it in, and the Canadians making a wholesale change. Philadelphia. Bladen couldn't get out against Jarvis. Now then Watson on the left side, ahead to Barber. Barber coming to center. He lost it, and Watson rolled it in over the line. There's Clark, and it's golfed away by Robinson. And it comes with 109 remaining. And if the Stanley Cup is won tonight, we will be down in the dressing room area for the post-game interviews. And I have just been told that officially Reg Leach has just been named winner of the Conn Smythe Trophy as the MVP of the playoffs. And there he is for his 19-goal performance. Reggie Leach of the Flyers. The assumption there is that the game is over, no doubt. Now here's Clark. Jarvis rolls at the center. One minute left. Five, three, Montreal. And if the game ends tonight in favor of Montreal and they win the Stanley Cup and they have to be prohibitive odds now with a two-goal lead, then Leach will become the second player in the history of the Smite Trophy to win it as a member of a losing team. Crozier won it when Montreal defeated Detroit in 1966. Hey, Danny, I thought that was going to be your last question to me of the season. <laughs> I was waiting for it, but once I knew the answer. 
Not too many questions. Holds your way, Dick, that you can't come up with the answer. 59 seconds left. Montreal Canadiens, five, Philadelphia, three. Canadians in the playoffs this year to this point have lost but one game. What a magnificent record. Now Philadelphia, good enough. Ahead to Clark. Clark comes to center. Shooting it in. There's Savard. What a series he's had. He cleared it into the corner. Savard on the move. And this Montreal defense, some say the greatest ever. Well, the jury will be out on that, but it has been some defense, Dick. Well, Danny, you don't go through the Stanley Cup playoffs and play three rounds and lose just once if that's what's going to happen and not have a, just a super defense. They have thrown up a blanket in front of Ken Dryden at times. And I think perhaps, and the Flyer players talk this way too, the, the big thing about the Montreal defense, it's not perhaps so much their defense as their offense. The fact that once they get a hold of that puck in their own zone, they can get it out of there so quickly and they've been able to move it up so fast. It hasn't given the other team a chance for too much in the way of sustained pressure inside the Montreal line. Reggie Leach has managed to break through, of course. He's been a big scorer. He's had five goals in this series in the four games, but otherwise, it's been they just shut the door on everybody. And now we are 32 seconds away from the end of the 1975-76 National Hockey League season. It would appear 32 seconds. Canadians leading five to three. Philadelphia. Everybody up. Back it goes to Leach. He has a tremendous shot. There it is, and he fired it wide. Lemaire gets it to the line. Now Canadians, LaPointe finally shoots it down the ice. And the net is empty. Philadelphia has lifted. Stevenson, last ditch stand by Philadelphia. 15 seconds left on the faceoff in Canadian territory. And that would have been rather interesting had that shot by Leach found the target. And it's maybe fitting now that Scotty Bowman sends out Jarvis, Ganey, and Jim Roberts for this face-off with 15 seconds left because you talk about the Canadians in the playoffs right from game one, and you've got to talk about that particular combination. Bobby Clark could tell you about it, I'm sure. And Robinson coming to the Canadians' bench. There is Bobby Clark, captain. Boy, that picture tells a lot, Danny. Hey, there was another loser, too, one year, another goaltender, Glenn Hall. 68. Now, this could be the final face-off. Let's see what happens. Jarvis and Clark struggle for it. Canadians get it to the line, not out. Now Ganey is going to try to clear it out. Here's Clark, over on an open point. Three seconds, two seconds. The game is over, and the Montreal Canadiens defeat Philadelphia for consecutive games with one second, apparently. Uh, one second showing on the clock. <laughs> now what's going to happen? One second to go and the whistle went. Now this is going to be interesting if Gilmore and if the league decides to play out the one second. The handshakes have already begun at center ice and the Flyers are coming off their bench and perhaps the season will end one second short. And there you see it in the spirit of good sportsmanship here at the Spectrum. And the fans now, I would have to think, are giving the Montreal Canadiens. Canadiens have shot the Flyers in the game 30 to 24, and the goals that won it, Lafleur at 14-18, Mahovlich at 15-16, and the Canadiens win 5 to 3. And even though one second left to play, showed on the clock, the Flyers say, what the heck, it's all over. And there you see now the traditional post-game handshakes, and this ends the season. And the long season wasn't quite so long, Danny. It could have gone uh, to the 27th of May. It ends on the 16th. So you get some very tired hockey players. They've just announced that Reggie Leach has won the Codspike Trophy. And, of course, that gives the fans something to cheer about. Danny, this was a great series, really. There was a lot of talk, especially after what happened when the Flyers and the Leafs got together about what might happen. But Joe Watson summed it up, I thought, well. At the beginning, he said, hockey... This series has to be good for hockey, and I think it was. Reggie Leach has been good for hockey. He's just shown tremendous talent. And the Canadians as a team have been superb. And you know, Dick, we've been saying many good things about the players from both teams, things that they deserve, comments and observations. 
But let us state right here, and a fellow by the name of William Scott Bowman did one a heck of a job as the coach of the Montreal Canadiens this year. He started the year. His objective was let's cut down on goals against. Let's win that Vesna Trophy. If we win the Vesna Trophy, and there you see the fellow who won it, Ken Dryden, then we, in all probability, will win the Stanley Cup. And that is impeccable strategy uh, fashioned by Scott Bowman. Well, the Flyers have left the ice. The Stanley Cup, you see it now, is in the area. In fact, they have brought it out just to the edge of the boards. And NHL President Clarence Campbell, and he expects this kind of a reaction wherever he goes. At times like this, walks out along with Brian O'Neill and Frank Torpe of the league front office. The Flyers have now all completely left the ice, and the Canadians are alone with the photographers, really, and the league executives. And now we are going to have the official on-ice presentation of the Stanley Cup. And Ivan Cornoyer, in his first year as captain of the Canadians, succeeding Henri Richard, has the honor of accepting the cup, and there it is. No microphones, no speeches this time at center ice. And the Canadian captain gets just a tremendous ovation. Just a tremendous ovation here in Philadelphia. Well, that's a very pleasant turnaround from the rather ugly feelings that developed earlier on in this playoff year. You know, Danny, the Canadians lost only 11 games in the regular season. They lost just once in the playoffs. It has just been a tremendous year for this club. And I think this year, more than any other in the past that I can remember, it's been much more of a team effort as opposed to the outstanding individual stars that this club has always had. Dick, I've been with the Canadians, associated with them many, many years. I've seen teams with tremendous spirit, but I think traveling with the club this year, I would have to say that never have I witnessed such camaraderie, such goodwill, such great spirit among the players as this year, 1975, 76, and I would think that that tremendous spirit uh, contributed immensely to the success of the hockey club as we look again at Cornwallier embracing lovingly that Stanley Cup which Montreal has not had since back in 1973. Now in some places that's not a very long period of time but when you talk about Montreal this is their 17th Stanley Cup since the Cup came into the possession of the National Hockey League. It's their 19th overall they won it twice prior to the cup coming into the possession of the National Hockey League. So when they go three years without winning it, it's a bit of a drought. Well, keep your eye here on the monitor. The Canadians celebrate. Larry Robinson's got to be in there somewhere. He has just been named the winner of the Sport Magazine Award as the MVP in the playoffs. Bernie Perron won it the last two years. And they give that award annually. Hell Network. In the dressing room area of the Montreal Canadiens who have just won the Stanley Cup defeating the defending champion Philadelphia Flyers. Mr. Clarence Campbell, the president of the National Hockey League, is with me and he will now again officially present the Cup to Montreal captain Ivan Cornway. Mr. Campbell. Ivan, congratulations to your team and all who are associated with you in this very fine victory. This is one of the more delightful privileges that I enjoy and this time for the 30th occasion to present the Stanley Cup. Thank you very much, Mr. Campbell. I think uh, the Flyer lost, but you've got to have a pretty good team to be uh, to win two years in a row and be in the final the next year. But this year, I think we've got a pretty good team. Uh, they have a pretty good crowd, but we still have a pretty good one. And this year, I think we're the best all over. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ivan, and congratulations. It's quite a thrill, your first year. Ivan, Danny Galvin was mentioning as we closed off the broadcast that he felt this year the spirit in the Canadians has been the best, and he's been with the team since 1952-53. Would you agree? I think so. I think uh, we started the first year with uh, pretty good guys, and uh, we finished like we started. We started good, and we finished good. Everybody did more than 100 percent and the coach and the assistant coach and everybody we gave everything this year and the captain got a very big goal at the end of the second period that was uh, a very important one right well it was about time and i doing something i didn't do too much in that series and uh, i was ready for that game and that was a big game for us because if we're going back in montreal you never know what can happen and i'm really happy that everybody did it together and it meant a little more maybe beating the defending champions right yes and it's like usually gila put it in and he always there for the big goal 
Ivan, again, congratulations to you and the Canadians. A great job. Well Thank done. you very much. Okay, Ivan Cornway. And as Ivan leaves, we will bring in a fellow who didn't allow too many goals to the opposition in this Stanley Cup year, Ken Dryden. And Ken, you have got to feel very relieved that it's all over. I do. Uh, I don't really remember being as tired. Uh, tonight was extremely hot, and uh, I think both teams were really feeling the effects uh, even as early as uh, the early portions of the first period. Ken, I thought that the Canadians throughout the playoffs showed extreme poise. You must notice it standing back. I thought the whole team just reacted so well to anything that might be happening to them on the ice. It's true. Uh, all year long, uh, people have asked me uh, how I would compare this team, uh, given the way we had done during the regular season. and. There was always something to hold back on. Uh, other teams that I had played on and won Stanley Cups, and this team hadn't. We've won the Stanley Cup now, and this is just really an extraordinary team. Uh, by far the best team that I've ever played on, and really all over the ice. Uh, the defense played well, the forwards played well, both offensively and defensively. I've never had as much fun playing with a team as I have with this team. Have you had time to soak in the reaction this year to when you won it first, your first Stanley Cup in 71? Well, not really. Uh, that 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 kind of series happened so quickly and it was was so unexpected and so on uh, i couldn't really appreciate it this one i've appreciated all the way through and and uh, i've enjoyed it and just one final word reg leach has won the cons my trophy you have a word for the reg leach fans there must be several across canada in the state i'm sure there must be uh he uh, he scored an awful lot of goals including a lot on me and uh, he had an outstanding year i guess 80 goals and in, in all and uh, really, I just I just hope that next year he takes it a little bit easier on us, that's all. Ken Dryden, you also had an outstanding year again. Congratulations. Thanks, Dave. Right. Ken Dryden, the goaltender of the Canadians, and here's a fellow. Everybody talked about the defense. Come on in here. Guy, Guy Lapointe, who had to rate high, I'm sure, in the Consmite oh, Trophy winning. That's fine, Guy. You sit because you deserve it. You are ringing wet. Uh, the boys mentioned it was very hot. Kenny said in the goal, I guess the same thing on defense, right? Yeah, it was pretty warm out there tonight. You know, like uh, there was about... I will say 100 degree, you know, yeah. like it was so warm and uh, like the first period, the all the team, you know, both teams, they were getting a lot on the ice, so uh, it was lots of work tonight. Guy, do you think that you personally played your best hockey of your career in the playoffs? Because I've watched you ever since the day you came to the NHL, and I would have to say that if it wasn't your best, it was awfully close. You feel very good, satisfied yourself. Sure, you know, when you went like that, you're always satisfied, you know, you just figure, you know, you do your work, but you got to give credit to all the team. I think all the team, if we won, all the team pull all together, and every time we're on the ice, I think all the guys that were on the ice were giving their best. So I think. Uh, that's the spirit team, you know, did all, all this year, so I think that's why we had success. All the guys, they were pulling together, and uh, <clears throat> I think we'll prove again this, the, tonight, and uh, who could have won on the road or in Montreal right. would have made any difference. And I said before, if, you know, you want to be a championship, you got to win on the road, too. Always the mark of a good team. Thank you, Guillermo. You want to get back inside with the boys. Much appreciated. Here is big Peter Mahovlich, who scored the clinching goal in this 5-3 to three win. And, uh, Peter, it's all over. And, again, I say to you what I said to Kenny, a feeling of satisfaction, I'm sure. Definitely, uh, Dick. It was a great year all year long, and uh, we set records all year long. And if we didn't win the Stanley Cup, it wouldn't have meant a darn thing. But we uh, we have a guy that won the scoring championship. We won the Vesna. You know, uh, we you know we set records all year round, and then we come into the playoffs and take it in 13 games against uh, three really good hockey teams. And uh, you know, it's just a such a satisfying year, really, Dick. Peter, you and I like to sit around some of the other boys on the trail, and then think about what might happen and make the odd wager too did you really think you could beat the philadelphia flyers in four straight games not really dick uh, you know we we were looking for a long series and uh, especially the way it started in montreal two nothing right off the bat and then uh but as it went along we we had thoughts of being able to beat them because of the uh, you know they, they looked tired and they were using bobby clark uh, quite a bit and uh you know there's only so much a guy can do for a team and uh you know, it, it, it finally showed up, I think, in the last two games because he, he just, you know, he just didn't have any more to give. And he, he played great hockey just as, as he was, and it was just something else. Peter, congratulations, and assist on the winning goal and the clinching goal to make it 5-3. Another great season for you, Pete. Thank you. Here, I'll move over here, uh, Stan. It's all right. The boys are cutting in front of me. Who's this? Dougie Jarvis, who, who ends up with the Stanley Cup in his first Stanley Cup year. I'm going to sit down, too. And along with him is right winger Jimmy Roberts, who's been around a little bit longer than Dougie. Jimmy, let the young fella talk first. Doug, how do you feel? First year, rookie season, and you win the Stanley Cup. It's really great, really a tremendous feeling, and uh, you know what a highlight of my hockey career. It's just been a uh, just a great year. Jimmy Roberts uh, keeps up the old guys' tradition here. Jimmy, way to go! You, you got. I'm sure you've got a lot of good words to say about this young man here, who was quite a center man for you throughout the playoffs. Well, I'll tell you, I'm getting a little old, and uh, he and Bobby really uh, carried me this year. And, uh, God, I got a lot of thanks to give to these two guys. They worked hard for me, and we had a great year as a line. And, uh, 
It's sure great to win that Stanley Cup again. Jimmy, a lot of people said, hey, where does Jimmy Roberts get those legs this late in the season? Uh, you skated better, Jim, in the playoffs than you did all season. What was the story? Well, I didn't want these kids that I'm playing with to embarrass me. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'd like to come back another year, so I guess I had to prove something in the playoffs. Dougie, this has got to be just a great thrill. Do you, do you look back on any one particular game in this particular series or, uh, you know, apart from the clinching game, in the series or in the playoffs uh, all around that maybe stands out in your mind? I don't know if there was one game that, that clinched it. I think it was just a, just a great overall team effort. I've never seen a team with such cohesiveness as this one and such team spirit. And, I mean, guys like Jimmy here are just a, such tremendous team men, and they just helped to pull us, you know, younger guys together. It's just tremendous. The penalty killing was just great, Jimmy. And I, ha I have to think that, you know, there were some power play goals tonight. But throughout the defensive play of this hockey club, a lot of talk about the offense all year with Montreal. But I think in the final analysis in the playoffs, the defense won. And that's usually what happens, isn't it, Jim? Well, you, you can't say enough about our defense. Our, I mean, our five defensemen, uh, they just played outstanding hockey. Uh, they made it easy for us forwards. They, they got it out of our end in a hurry. And uh, I don't think enough has been said about our defensemen. And uh, I think they won it for us. Well, the defensive play all around was great. Gentlemen, Doug Jarvis, Jimmy Roberts, congratulations. A great Thank job you. in winning the Stanley Cup. Peggy Reichsbrow is standing by. He's taking a couple of deep breaths because, like everybody else, he's a little shook up by all this because for Doug Reichsbrow, this is his second year in the, in the National Hockey League, and this is his first Stanley Cup, and it's got to be quite a feeling, young man. Well, it is. It is, you know, and the guys work so hard, and last year we worked hard, but we just seemed to miss something, and, you know, it's a tough tough ending when you, when you work all year, you practice all the time, do all that traveling, and, and all of a sudden you have an empty feeling, and, and this year I think a lot of guys just said, well, let's do our best. Let's let's stay healthy. Let's do a lot of things different from last year. Work harder, and uh, maybe things will come our way. And, and it worked out that way, and we came out with a, a full feeling. Doug, you had a tough act to follow on our particular show because your mother was one of our guests on the Mother's Day program. She did just a great job, and I think since then you played some of the best hockey I've ever seen you play. Scotty was double teaming you and Dougie Jarvis uh, really against Bobby Clark for the most part. It seemed to work out. Uh, work out. That was the plan, right? Well, it seemed to be that way. You know, we tried to do that at home, and then when you get on the road, they have the advantage of changing, and uh, it takes, you know, pretty well two men to cover him and, and the rest of the guys on the ice, and if we can wear them down, then uh, all the better for us. And uh, like I say, there's a lot of guys that just pushed incredibly, and it makes it so easy for us to follow. Well, you played a great series, especially the last few games. Doug, congratulations. A great first Stanley Cup win. I'm sure there'll be a few more. <laughs> Thank you very okay. much. Sport Magazine always announces an MVP involved with the winning team in the Stanley Cup. And this year, I guess you must know it now, Larry Robinson, the Canadian's big bird, has been selected as the winner. Larry was my guest after the Game 3 on the Canadian telecast after a great effort. And here you are with, what, your second Stanley Cup win, Larry? You uh, Come on, now smile. The other fellows were smiling. Yeah. A little whacked out, are you? Oh, I'm really tired, Dick. Uh, I hurt my back again the second period. Right. And, uh, I don't know, every time I made a, a certain move, I lose my breath, so... I'm just a little in pain, a little tired, a little, uh, little happy. You just, uh, you know, I can't describe it. Well, here I won't keep you on this bench too long. And besides getting a back rub, they had a, they had a good shot on television. Larry, a lot of people thought that the Flyers might be very rough. It might be a lot rougher series than what it turned out. Uh, did it not turn out the way you expected in that respect? Well, it, w it wasn't. Uh, you know, there's uh, two ways to define rough. Uh, I think maybe they, they thought maybe there'd be a lot more fighting than uh, there was, uh, but. As you know, uh, fighting is only a part of the game, and it was it was a physical uh, series, uh, and uh, we outscored them. We uh, won the games, and that's why we've got the Stanley Cup right now. Larry, they've got it because a fellow like you played so well along with everybody else. Thank you very much, Larry, and again, congratulations. Thanks very much. Okay, and moving in now is this side. That's okay. Guy Lafleur, who scored the winning goal. Guy, can you talk just a little bit about the goal that that turned out to be the winner in the 5-3 victory? Oh, I think uh, Peter uh, Steve had the puck, and he gave it to uh, Peter seemed to go in the corner and he turned around I uh, was going through the net so uh, he just gave it to me uh, the puck was bouncing a little bit so I just fired the puck I didn't look at all I just fired the puck he it went to the right spot did the Flyers check you as closely in the playoffs as they did perhaps in the games in the regular season no I don't think so uh, they were playing the man and uh, I think uh, it's very tough uh, to play uh, that kind of hockey because uh, we were playing four line and uh, you know everybody have to play well and uh, it's very tough 
He, he had a, a defensive game. He a tremendous season, the Art Ross Trophy for the scoring championship, the winning goal in the Stanley Cup clinching game. Congratulations. Just a great job. Thanks a lot. All right. Guy Lafleur of the Canadians and over here is a gentleman I've had a lot to do with this season in the past, Coach Scotty Woman. Congratulations, Scotty. Second Stanley Cup. The play, what, they bath you yet uh, in there? Well, I guess so. Uh, uh, we'd, uh, I was standing in there and I had gotten away, I guess, some... Uh, champagne. You don't mind that. Scotty, a very satisfying victory, I'm sure. Can you Have you had time to think to compare it with your first Stanley Cup win three years ago? Well, you always remember the first one, Dick, but I think uh, we were expected to win that one. Uh, we were maybe a little bit of a favorite because of our standing in the league, but we beat a great hockey team, uh, a team that uh, proved what hard work could do uh, in the last three years. And, uh, you know, they uh, when you beat the champion, I guess it makes you feel a little better. But uh, they, they gave it everything they had. I think both teams didn't have anything left really uh, in the third period we were fortunate we both went to our bench uh, in tonight's game and i think it improved both clubs scotty a lot of people felt that the series that you had with the islanders helped get you ready for the flyers did you look at it that way yes the flyers uh, and and the islanders play similar styles uh, they're very strong defensively they check very hard and i think uh, possibly uh, you know we were fortunate we won so many games by one goal but then we were doing it throughout the season and you know we won 70 games this year and you can't say any more than that about a hockey team. Scotty, the the season saw you shore up the defense, as Danny Gallivan mentioned, and you've got to look to your defensive play. You must be very proud of the way the club played all around, not just the forwards, as forwards as well as the defense, not just the defense. Well, I think so, uh, Dick. Uh, fellas like uh, Doug Jarvis, Bob Ganey, Jim Roberts, uh, uh, the trend will probably change. Uh, these players are the ones that, uh, you know, you need them to win. Uh, to win. You need the scorers, too. But I still think that uh, when you get players like that gave, like these ones did, uh, they didn't score goals, but they kept the other team off the score sheet, the scores of the series, and uh, I think that was the difference. Scotty Bowman, congratulations on a great coaching job all season. Uh, Thank you, Dick. Just well deserved, certainly. And we are trying to get some Philadelphia Flyers. They tell us if we can get them down a very crowded hallway out here. Come on in here, Murray. One of the fellows who was not in uniform tonight, but who played a great series for the Canadians, Murray Wilson, who was soaking wet. Uh, he's the oh, one who did get the shower. Murray, first of all, you can perhaps tell the folks why you weren't out there tonight. Oh, uh, the other night, just uh, I got the breakaway. I stopped and shot by Tommy Bladen and uh, shattered uh, the bone of my big toe into about a million pieces when I looked at the x-rays. So we were hoping uh, if we didn't wrap her up tonight that I'd get back in for Tuesday, but thank God she's all over. Murray, a lot of the fellows have talked, to, and, and you're a fellow who, as you've been injured, you've been, you know, sort of had to sit back a little bit once in a while during the season. They talk about the spirit in this club. I, I don't remember it being any better, the fellows who are playing regularly and the fellows who aren't, right? <laughs> this, this club is just unreal. Okay. One of the main this guy right here. That's he, right. I guess he you does it all out there, and, uh, you know, even when we do get down one or two goals, they just uh, have the knack that uh, away we go and away we get going again. You know, we got the goal scorers and we got the great checkers in both. Well, this is Bob Ganey, who is certainly one of the greatest checkers in the National Hockey League today. Bob, congratulations. This is your first Stanley Cup uh, again. Very quickly, I say it to the other fellows. How do you feel, number one? Well, Dick, I don't think it's going to dawn on us till tomorrow. I think all year we knew we could win it and we thought we could win it, but uh, now it's happened and it's the first one for me, so... I think we're gonna. It's gonna take most of the night to figure out what's going on. <laughs> and then we won't be able to figure it out anyways. It'll take a couple of days, both. Couple of days, before. Bob. What about this particular series coming in against the Philadelphia Flyers? Uh, as far as your line was concerned, and as far as your entire plan was concerned, especially the defensive forwards. What really? What was it? Obviously, it had to work. Well, I think we went up against probably the top line in the league, and uh, Leach still scored five or six goals. Um, uh, Barber scored one tonight. Bobby Clark uh, didn't uh, get the goals maybe they needed, but. We, we played probably our best hockey against that line. They still come out with that many goals against us. And I think that says something for their team, that's for sure. Well, you beat a great team, to be sure. Bob Ganey, Murray Wilson, congratulations on a great Stanley Cup victory. Thank Thanks you. very much, fellas. We mentioned that the Conn Smythe Trophy has been won. Brian O'Neill of the National Hockey League's uh, front office is here. And uh, Reggie Leach of the Philadelphia Flyers. Reggie, if you'll just come in here, Brian, and uh, Brian will take over. Hang on, Reggie, we'll just get this cord straightened out, Brian. Well, Reggie, you were uh, voted as the most valuable player to your team throughout the entire playoffs by the sports writers that attend these series. And on behalf of the National Hockey League, I congratulate you. I know you probably would rather receive this under better circumstances, but our congratulations to you, Reggie. Thank you, this Brian. Thank you very much. Well, Reggie Leach, I'm sure that, as Brian said, under better circumstances, maybe a bit happier, but the word from you on behalf of the Philadelphia Flyers. Well, you know, I'll tell you, we give it, we give it all we had and. Uh, we lost a hell of a hockey club, and uh, they deserve it. They're the best team in, in the world right now. And uh, all I can say is that uh, Flyers will be back next year. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody that voted, voted for me for the Consmax Trophy, and uh, I'm really glad about it. 
Ken Dryden said he hopes you don't do the same thing to him when next season starts that you were doing in the playoffs. You were really firing from that right side. Uh, was this your plan against Dryden, or is that just the way it worked out? Well, that's the way it worked out. You know, I, the goal I got tonight, you know, the first two I got against him in Philly was uh, on to the left side, so I figured, well, maybe he thought I was going to go to the same side, so I figured I might as well put it up high on the short right. side, and I... As it happened, I, I beat him. Reggie, a record-setting 19-goal performance in the playoffs, and sincere congratulations on that and the Conn Smythe Trophy. Victory. Thank you very much. Reggie Leach, winner of the Conn Smythe Trophy. So that's the story from the Canadians' dressing room area. This is Dick Irvin. The Canadians have won the Stanley Cup. <laughs>